Here's a big announcement from Central Georgia Primary Care. We're proud to announce the opening of our second location right here on Central Drive in East Dublin. No matter where you are, north, south, east or west, Central Georgia Primary Care has a health professional waiting to serve you. Central Georgia Primary Care, next to Paul's Tower on Industrial Boulevard in Dublin, and now at our brand new location on Central Drive in East Dublin, right next to Thomas Auto Supply. Need an appointment? Call us at 478-202-9440. Central Georgia Primary Care, waiting to serve you at both locations, Industrial Boulevard in Dublin, and now on Central Drive in East Dublin. We believe that the customer chooses to buy insurance from people that they trust and that they know. More importantly, that they know that they will take care of them when something happens. The thing that has helped us grow the most as an agency is without a doubt the people. It's the people inside this agency that are the heartbeat. It's the team at Curry Maffitt that forges a relationship with each and every customer that walks in our door. So I would like to reach out and say thank you. Thank you for everything you do for me. Thank you for everything you do for this agency. But most importantly, thank you for everything you do for our customers. When I say Curry Maffitt is an agency unlike any other, it's an experience that we're trying to create for the customer that makes buying insurance one of the easiest things that they will ever do. When you have a problem, you need to know that we will be there for you, but you also need to know that we will respond to you. If you're looking for a more hands-on approach to your insurance needs, stop by and experience what we mean when we say we're an agency unlike any other. Curry Maffin Insurance, downtown Dublin. Welcome to Chamber Talk. We have a great show today. I want to welcome my good friend Trey Kemp with me and Trey, uh, commercial lender with Morris Bank and county commissioner. And, and so thank you for, for taking time to be with us today. Um, thank you. We're going to talk a lot more today about uh, being a county commissioner and, and what that means, what that looks like, some of the duties and responsibilities of our county mm -hmm. commissioners, the meetings, all sorts of stuff. So. I want to get right into it and I want to uh, first start with asking you, um, tell us a little bit about you, your family, and, uh, and then why or when, how did you decide that uh, you thought you might want to be a county commissioner? Well, I'm born and raised in Lawrence County. I uh, grew up in Dexter and that's where we, my family and I moved back to. Um, and I decided to run in roughly 2014, 2015 for county commissioner. Um, I, my district is a little bit different than other districts in the county. It's a much more hands-on place. Um, you've got to ride a lot of roads. Um, there's just a lot that you have to do on a daily basis. Um, and I thought that I could, I could really contribute. Uh, I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like to sit still very much. And it seemed to be just kind of the right fit for that particular position. And, um, and it's kept me busy for sure. So when you run for county commissioner, what does that look like? How, how did you become elected and, and how long are your terms? And explain some of that to me. For the most part, it's a tr traditional election. Um, my cycle is on the presidential cycle. So I'll run again in 2024. Um, but it, it just pretty much goes like any four year term. And so three commissioners run at one time um, on the off cycle years. So they, we've got three that are gonna be uh, reelected this year in November and then myself and another commissioner will go on the presidential cycle. That way you're not, you don't have 100% turnover of the commission at the same time should everyone decide to retire or something like that. And you guys, uh, four year terms you mentioned mm -hmm. there and just for our viewers, how often do you meet? Um, are those meetings open to the public? Where do you meet? Tell me those. All the meetings are open, open to the public, every meeting that we have. So if we have a workshop, we advertise those at least three days before the meeting um, in the newspaper. And the same thing goes for a, a public county meeting, a regular scheduled county meeting. They're usually the first Tuesday um, at 5.30. I say usually because we are not going to, we almost never have one in July mm -hmm. um, after the budget cycle. But um, we have, uh, it the number of meetings really depends on what's going on. I think that we've about meted, met to death in, in June. I think uh, we probably met 
three times probably this month for the county commission and then the rec authority and solid waste authority and all these other meetings you have to do. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in about two a week. But you guys have you've been busy and and actually addressing and handling a lot of That's right. hot topics and big issues impacting our community. So, uh, Trey, for our our citizen again that's watching the show today, and and maybe they had a question about why you do or or someone else doesn't. Uh, Brian Rogers or mm -hmm. one of the other commissioners are are doing something or why something is not being done. Um, or maybe, maybe, and I, I hope this happens just from time to time. I don't, I know the meetings I've been to, you don't see it a whole lot. Maybe somebody wants to come and congratulate or say thank you for the good work that you're doing. Um, but how would a citizen go about having an opportunity to address council or speak or ask a question at a council meeting? Well, that's a great question because people oftentimes ask us, can they be put on the agenda? And that's, that's one of those things that's not required for us. We have a public comment section towards the end of the meeting. And so if you want to speak at a public meeting, just show up. At a workshop, it's, it's a lot less formal. So if you just show up, um, it's almost like you're, you're a member of the, the commission because it's more of a conversation than it is an actual formal meeting. So that's probably the, the best way to go to a public meeting. But if someone wants to get in touch with me for any of the, or uh, have a question about any of the things going on, um, I, I publish my cell phone number, and so it's, it's on my website, you know, it's on my business cards, it's at the commission office. They've been ordered to, to give my number out, my cell phone number out to whoever calls and says they need it. Well, and I, I do want to take a minute and say thank you, uh, certainly on behalf of the chamber, but even uh, personally, I know for you and, and many of the other uh, commissioners, anytime that I've ever needed to get in touch with you guys. You, you do a really, really good job of, uh, I may get a text or something that says, hey, I'm in a meeting, but then I get a phone call back or, sure. or you guys follow up. And you've been great to, to work and partner with us at the Chamber of Commerce uh, from speaking at First Friday events or whether it was a legislative update or whatever we've called on you guys to do. Um, you've been readily available for us, so we appreciate that. Well, so. We definitely support the Chamber. I don't know anyone on the board uh, or part of the staff that doesn't uh, really appreciate the support of the chamber. So we, we love what you guys do. Well, thank you. Hey, we, uh, we got a ton of things that I wanna talk about today and, and I hope this is going to be very educational for our community here. Um, but a lot of that work and those meetings that you guys have been having, we're gonna talk about uh, what some of the results of some of those meetings are going to mean uh, for the future of Dublin Lawrence County. So uh, we hope you'll stay with us. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Summer's right around the corner and you know what that means, it's vacation time. Here at Dublin Nissan we can get you ready for vacation, whether it's a new Nissan or Chevrolet or just servicing your current vehicle. And guys, if you're looking for a new fishing truck, you can't go wrong with this all new 22 Frontier. And if your needs are bigger, we got the trucks for you too. It's your choice. I know what mine is. Remember, Don sells Corvettes well. Hurry in to Dublin Chevy Nissan. The City of Dublin, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Your city to live, work, and play. The kind of hot topics are things called patient-specific implants and instruments, which is where we use imaging like CT scans and MRIs to measure people's bone and look at the shapes of their bones and then make implants and devices we use to implant the, the knee or hip replacement based on that particular person. And just about every company has that available and, and people use it to varying degrees just based on, again, the patient's anatomy and whether there's some reason that you really need that extra assistance. There's also robotics that is starting to come out into the orthopedic world that's been in the general surgery world for a while now. We're starting to use robotic arms to do things like to help us make the cuts and shape the bone so the implants fit well. Welcome back to the show and uh, Trey Kemp again. Thank you for, for joining us today, County Commissioner. And today we're, we're gonna talk about a, a, just a, an array of things that you guys do. You know, I was on the website actually just preparing for the meeting and mm -hmm. clicking through the different departments that are, are all fall under the county and I thought wow I just did not realize there are that many different departments and services that fall under uh, the county administration right but uh, one of the things and I'm sure you guys have no more fun doing this than, than anybody but you have to work on taxes 
and, sure. and recently uh, tax assessments were sent out and, and things like that happened. And so I want you to talk to me a little bit about how those rates are determined mm -hmm. and, and uh, that whole process. And then if someone's not happy, maybe they, they just got their recent taxes on their home and they want to appeal or something. What, what process would that look like? Sure. So no one, I'll go ahead and say this, no one on the commission wanted to touch taxes. Uh, it's radioactive. You know, anytime you touch taxes, especially in, in an environment like we're in where the prices of everything are, are so high, that we knew that the, the, the values would have to go up. But the state knows that we don't want to do that. And so they put a metric in place and we have to stay within the bounds of what the what recent sales have been. Mm. And if we go beyond those bounds, <clears throat> they force us to have a reavail or they'll tell us that we can't collect taxes at all. Wow. And so they really put the gun to us and, and say, this is what you will do and this is how you will do it. And so we have to kind of operate within those bounds. And so that's why we sent out the most recent uh, reavail. And so the last time we did one was in 2015. And so seven years is a long time to wait. And as a result, a lot of those property values um, have substantially increased in that intervening seven years. And so when people got their, their, uh, their tax notification in May, they were a little bit surprised to see that the values had gone up the way that they had. So is it still safe to say though, Trey, I know uh, during one of the, the recent <coughs> elections, I was doing a, a forum with some of the candidates mm -hmm. Uh, and I believe, I know it was as recent as in the last two years, Lawrence County though was still by far as, as concerning taxes. We were one of the, the least expensive places uh, to live as far as taxes go. There's no doubt that we are. Um, so I do a, a study every single year about how Lawrence County fares, our millage rate fares uh, compared to the rest of the state and compared to surrounding counties. Uh, surrounding counties were less than half of the millage rate of what surrounding counties charge. And at the same time, I think we're the number either 11th or 12th um, as of 2021 for the lowest millage rate in the state. Wow. And that's out of 159 counties. So to be in the top 10% is really something. And at the same time, we're sitting on over 800 square miles of, of land. Right. The fourth largest county in the state. So the fact that we can provide all the services that we do and have a millage rate as low as we do it really speaks to how well the county is, is managed and how tight we are with our budgets. I, I think so as well, and you guys do a great job there. Uh, along those lines, and you mentioned the, the, you know, I guess just the amount of property here in Lawrence <laughs> County and the, the miles that have to be covered. And along those lines, uh, fire, EMS, right. police. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the, the role of the county commissioners and, and how you guys um, allocate your funding and different things. Is, is there anything going on new or different along those lines as well? Sure. So since I have been here, we have probably increased the budget of around $7 million in the six years that I've been on the commission. Um, the scope of what we do has not increased, but how we do it has increased. So for example, the sheriff's office, uh, it still does the same thing that it did before, but there's more staff that work for the sheriff's office than have ever worked for it before. And so, uh, you know, that takes a little bit more money. And so the same thing is true of EMS, of rural fire. Uh, these are all professional services, and we have to pay the folks that, that do a lot of those jobs. And so um, we've had to increase staff, especially recently. And that's uh, tough. It's that's, very tough really right hard. now. Um, and so what we do hasn't changed, but how we do it has changed quite a bit. And, and I think again, uh, I, I, just great job working with what you have and making the most of what you have to get the most out of it. Um, another question, and I may jump all over the place when I sure. do this, is yeah, whatever pops in my mind next is, is usually what I ask. Um, I know you guys have different appointments to mm -hmm. different boards. And, and whether it's the Recreation Department or the Development Authority mm -hmm. or, or wherever that is. Talk to me a little bit about some of the appointments that you guys have and, and what does that process look like? Is that all of the commissioners getting together and, and is there a nominating committee or just so our viewers uh, can understand who represents maybe some of these other boards, who are the county appointments and how do they get there? Sure. So the important part about most of the appointments that we have is that it puts the authority in the lap of the, whatever that board is. So the Lawrence County Commission 
um, authorized, we funded this recent reeval, but it was the Board of Assessors who, who really initiated that reeval in the first place, and those are all appointed uh, board members. The same thing with the Rec Authority, uh, with the Landfill, with the Solid Waste mm -hmm. Board, and a few others. Um, and typically what will happen is, uh, if there's a vacancy, what the commissioners will do is they'll get together and they'll say, you know, what, what's the direction we want this particular board to go in? Who would be a good fill for this slot? Um, and then we approach, you know, two or three different people and we try to, to kind of marry the right person for the right board. Um, because some folks that might excel in one board might not excel in another board. And so it's a, it's a tailored process to every single board that we, we have appointment authority over. Okay. Um, Splice. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we recently passed uh, a continuation. Um, and right off the top of my head, and I should know, Trey, we have three, three different Splice, is that correct? Or is there two well, in Lawrence County? Well, so we have East Splice, which is strictly for education, mm -hmm. uh, T Splice, and then we have Lost. Um, and so those are a little bit different from each other. Uh, the, the hottest topic typically is, um, is just the general SPLOS that, that gets passed every six years that's non-education related. So um, is that just a local option sales tax? Is it? Well, that's the loss. Loss yeah, is right, a local option. Right. SPLOS is a special local right. option sales tax. And it's special because what happens is we publish in the newspaper all of the items that we're right. wanting SPLOS to fund for that intervening six years. And so at the, um, at the onset, we have to know what we're gonna spend that money on before we even put it before the voters to vote on. And so it's a little bit different. There's some, we have some wiggle room with Lost, um, just, as, uh, just as East Bloss, there's a little bit more wiggle room with that. But we can only spend Sploss money on very, very specific items. Right. And it would be illegal for us to spend money on things that were not listed on that referendum when folks voted on the SPLOS in the first place. And, and the t SPLOS, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong on this, I, I know enough about it to be dangerous, but that's a regional SPLOS that we participate with other communities and that's we right. benefit from that money, but that is 100%. That's transportation infrastructure type things like that. So let me just say the t SPLOS is absolutely one of the best sales taxes that we have in the state of Georgia. And we're extremely fortunate to be participating in a region that has passed it again, mm -hmm. but also to be where we are located. So these are regional, the, every t SPLOS project is a regional t SPLOS project. And so the people that benefited from Hillcrest, for example, or one of these other large projects are oftentimes funded by other people in other counties. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, other folks will come to Walmart in Kroger from outside of Lawrence County and they help they provide help the sales that. tax that funds it. But the projects themselves oftentimes are done in Lawrence County because we're a regional hub. Right. And so we really benefit twice. And we get double bang for our buck when we talk about T-Splost. Yeah, T-Splost and, and, and even riding around town and seeing and realizing some mm -hmm. of the benefits. Lawrence County has benefited as much, if not more than any other Absolutely. county that, that participated in SPLOS. So that's Absolutely. been great for us. All right, I got to ask you something, and this was kind of funny to me. I picked up the paper one day, and I don't yeah. know if the paper used this term or the county commissioner used this term, and I thought it was kind of odd to say found money, but it was like $11 million. Is that, mm -hmm. the, and, and I thought, well, was, you know, and people have asked me, so was somebody at the, commissioner's office digging through a closet and they, <laughs> they come across a suitcase or no. how and how did we arrive at 11 million's a lot it's a lot it's how, a lot what what do you um what do you think caused that big of a of an increase in that tax that, that we didn't see maybe so i'll go ahead and say i'm the one that said found money at the meeting that was me it was a very unfortunate use of words <laughs> I, i'll go ahead and tell you i've caught a lot of flack for it um but basically what it is is money that we were not we did not know that we were going to get didn't allocate for that yeah. exactly and so i would say in my opinion and and uh, you know opinions may vary but in my opinion the state changed their regulations on what could be taxed uh -huh. and so when the t-splos passed originally you couldn't tax amazon and online purchases and there was no sales tax associated with those purchases but the state of Georgia changed the way that they regulated that. And they said, you have to tax. Right. People who purchase things on Amazon in the state of Georgia, you have to utilize whatever their local tax is. And so Amazon purchases and other online purchasing really started to contribute in a way that was unforeseen 
when we originally passed the SPLOST. And so, you know, consumption went up, obviously. Uh, consumer consumption went mm -hmm. up um, when COVID hit. But even before COVID hit, we were in excess of what our SPLOST funds we had anticipated getting because the state changed its law. And so okay. it, was a, it was a huge benefit to us. And I think it was fair uh, because it, it not only makes it fair for the consumer. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and everyone who benefits from that, that online ordering capability, but it made it fair to business owners, local business owners, brick and mortar business mm -hmm. owners. Because, you know, if you can shave 10 bucks off your purchase by deciding on what you want in the store and then going home and ordering off Amazon, that makes it unfair to the yeah. business owner who operates inside of Lawrence County. And so having that taxation so that, that it captures everybody, everyone who's gonna make that purchase, I think is fair to everybody. And that, that let's take just a minute to say, please, please, please. Um, I, I know everybody shops online from mm -hmm. time to time. I sure. know we at, at my house from time to time, but mm -hmm. buy local as much as you can, when you can, where you can. And, and if it is, and I know times are hard and money's tight, but, but if it's a 50, 60, 70 cent difference or a dollar and, and you could buy that product local, please support local businesses Absolutely. because I, I, love, I do. I'm the person, I, I've ordered stuff online and, and to me, I say you pay for it. You pay for it in a way where you, you order. It don't, it don't always look like it looked when you ordered online right. or it doesn't fit the way. Uh, so I found a lot of value in being able to go to a local retail store Absolutely. And, and make purchases. So. Off subject there just a little bit, but we want to make sure uh, we mention that. Um, Trey, uh, what else is it that anything that, that's on your mind right now or a hot topic that you guys are working on or something mm -hmm. you could use help with or anything uh, as far as county commissioners go? Well, one of the things that we've talked about off and on for the last couple of years is consolidation of services. So oftentimes we'll have uh, one department share a building with another department. And so, you, you probably just scared half our county when you started with that no, word. You, <laughs> it, well, and, and, and once I explain, it'll make a whole sure. lot more sense. But 911, for example, is, is really part of the sheriff's office uh, infrastructure. And it just really doesn't make sense for them not to kind of be their own thing. And that gives the sheriff's office a lot more space to operate with. We can give them that 911 space. And then we can put everything 911 in one building. And that's, that's pretty awesome that, that we mm -hmm. can do that right now. Uh, so we're building a, a separate 911 center, and that'll benefit both 911 technologically and the sheriff's office as far as space goes. And that will allow everything EMS and 911 to be in just one central location. So it'll be a hub. And having that, that consolidation of services is just fantastic. Um, another thing, and, and this has been something that we've ban you know, batted back and forth for a couple of three years, maybe more, was a morgue. Um, a county of our size ha should have one and we haven't had one. And so as we're trying to go down this path of making our services a little more efficient, mm -hmm. um, we're going to build a morgue out at the same location um, off of uh, County Farm Road on okay. the back side of Southern Pines. And so um, and this is just part of a long-term strategic goal we had to make our processes more efficient and to make it a little bit easier to operate. as as cheaply as possible because the last thing we want to do is is increase taxes right and right. so the longer we can hold that off i think the better we'll all be and and it all started with southern pines because we got 4-h which we're responsible for to an extent and the rec authority in one building and, and, so, and great great project out there and so i was awesome. really glad because the rec authority was at the welcome center yeah their office was at the welcome center and we really appreciated the development authority allowing the rec authority to use that space, but it just made more sense for that to be housed on the same facility. Yes. And to have all of that under one umbrella was, an, in my opinion, an excellent decision. Absolutely, and, and beautiful facility. If, if you've not been there, go out there. Uh, you know, the water park, the, the ballparks, and I know there's a lot of investment mm -hmm. in the future and the growth of Southern Pines out there, but but wonderful job on that and it does it just makes sense with all the regional ball tournaments and everything that that happen out there right. to have those offices right there on site so um we're going to come back and continue that conversation actually after we take one more commercial break we'll be right back 
Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. My name is uh, Phil Patel. I am one of the part owners here and the general manager here at the Hampton Inn and Suites. First time when I got introduced to Morris Bank, the people were so friendly and helpful. You feel like that you are appreciated there. At Morris Bank, everybody down at the bank is so friendly, and not just to myself, they're just friendly to everybody. They want us to succeed because our success is their success at the same time. That makes a lot of difference, and they're always there for us. Welcome back to the show again. Trey, thank you, man. I'm, I'm learning some things myself. Some of these things I'm asking because people have said, hey, I just think this would be a good question to ask a commissioner, but uh, sure. some of them are, are uh, I'm, wow, okay, I didn't know that, and uh, so that's good. Uh, before we went to our commercial break, we mentioned Southern Pines, mm -hmm. and uh, man, what a huge asset for our community. I was up in Cartersville the other day, and I don't know how many folks here may have, have been on that side of Atlanta to right. their complex that they built there. They got something really, really nice to be proud of there. Sure. Um, and we do as well. And, and ours is continuing to grow. And I know you guys voted recently and, and they're going to make even more upgrades mm -hmm. um, at Southern Pine. So talk to me a little bit about some of those upgrades that'll be taking place. Sure, so one of the things that we realized, and this goes back to a, a part of our earlier discussion, was that we were gonna have a fairly large excess in, in SPLOST revenue. And so we can't spend it on just anything. And it takes a long time to uh, pave more roads, mm -hmm. years really. And so we needed to have a project that we could put money into that would have some real tangible economic impact, but it also in increased the services for the people of Lawrence County. And so what that was gonna be, we, we really didn't know. Um, we have increased the number of roads we're gonna resurface and things like that, but um, we wanted to, to put our money somewhere that was really gonna benefit the most people. Um, and so ultimately it was decided that we would turf the uh, infields and a couple of other fields there at Southern Pines to make us more marketable for folks that were gonna come from outside of, of this immediate area to have tournaments. And so that has a huge impact for that 441 area mm -hmm. around the interstate um, because it brings folks from across the state and across the region oftentimes to these fields. And um, we just wanted to make sure that we were investing the right way that would have the most benefit for everybody. Was it more soccer fields or something as well? I one think, of them we was a soccer field, that's so. right. And we've got a couple of other ones, but we, we turfed one soccer field. It okay. was, I mean, if you can imagine, it was expensive already to turf anything more than this. Um, would have been would have been probably astronomical, but um, we had to sp spend it on something infrastructure related. And uh, this was a very good recreation project. That's yeah. gonna make us more marketable for people across, well, uh, across the area. And, and I can tell you, and I know some people probably, you know, said, you know, gee, we could have spent that money elsewhere. We, mm -hmm. and, and you could always second guess or say, well, we might could have this or this or this or this, but I, I really am good friends with the chamber president up in Cartersville. And, yeah. and just to hear from her, the economic impact that that facility sure. has made there in the last five or six years, and even going up recently, uh, and seeing the growth mm -hmm. and the restaurants and the That's hotels right. and everything that, that have come up since that investment is huge. But you bring up a really good point. So uh, if, if people do believe that that money could be better spent elsewhere, let's talk about that. Right. Right. Like if someone's got an idea um, that they think that money could really benefit people, they really need to bring it before us because none of us are, are too proud to admit that we don't have all the answers uh, because we certainly don't. And so I would love for somebody uh, to come in and say, what you really need to do is, and give us some really good projects to mull over. Uh, the reason I say that is uh, we're fixing to be in the next SPLOS cycle. And if there's something that would benefit everybody, 
in the whole county and, and, and help generate revenue and do all of the things that this current investment does, I sure would love to hear about it. I, I, I can't thank you enough for saying that, Trey, and, and I feel the same way even at the chamber because I'm sure you, just like me, one thing you hate to hear is when somebody finally comes to you and they say, well, everybody's saying or everybody yes. says, well, if yes. any or everybody would come tell yes. me, I can't do anything about it if right. I don't know what it is. So and it's yeah. funny because oftentimes when people come to me and, and, and they are to the point of, of anger or frustration, um, but they're valid, right? So mm -hmm. the things that they bring to me oftentimes are very valid. And so if they'll, if they'll have a, a, a bright idea and say, hey, look, you guys should spend money on X or Y or Z, no one's going to dismiss them. I can promise you that because uh, if we do have a windfall like we did in this last blast, mm -hmm. um, then we, we got to have good infrastructure projects or uh, other capital improvements to spend that money on. And if someone's got a great idea, man, I'd love to hear it. That'd it is. Great. And, and sometimes just to say real quick, too, and a reminder to people, it's all in how you say it sometimes. Cool yourself a little bit sure. and come and say, hey, w could we try this? Or what right. do you think if we did this? And you'll get a lot further that way. And, and people do want to listen to you when you want to help right. um, rather than just saying, well, this is wrong or you could have done this different or could have done this better. And I'm a sucker for a project. I will, I will work a project until it is, <laughs> it is, you know, absolutely done. And so a thing like Southern Pines or a, a really good road project or something else that's going to, you know, that we can invest capital in that's going to change the, what Lawrence County looks like, not for our generation, but for the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's something that's going to be there forever. Wow, what a great thing to invest your money in. That's right. Um, so, I, I really encourage people, anyone who ever thinks that they've got a good idea, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, bring it to us, and I promise you it will get just consideration. So, I, and I wish we were ending with that. I got one more topic <laughs> I want to cover. Sure. We're going to flip back to something that's that positive to close with, because I want to close with something positive today. Um, but one other thing I did want to ask you about is um, uh, different ordinances and, mm -hmm. and different, th like if, if somebody wants to build a house. Right. Um, and and different issues such as that where do these ordinances come from how do they come about how are they changed when could they be changed talk to me a little bit about those types of ordinances or policies so you know you brought up the word earlier in the conversation or, or i did and we both did uh consolidation the word consolidation we have we don't have any sort of consolidation of services in lawrence county we don't have any zoning in lawrence county um, we are a pretty permissive place to, to do business and to build and to operate um, there's not a whole lot of regulations. Uh, we have, uh, you can get a book of ordinances from the commission office, but the best place is just to go on the website. Um, and if you go on the Lawrence County website, you can look at any ordinances you want to. Um, and, and there's not a lot of them, um, and so it won't take you too long. But everything that we have as a rule for the entire county is listed there. And business license. No business license at this in time. In the county. In the county, that's in correct. In the county. And, and in the unincorporated county. And, and let me just real, real quick touch on something, and I want to know where you guys are at on that because I know it was causing a little bit of problem with some of these pop-up um, rehab centers mm -hmm. and, and places where you guys got right. that pretty much now? Well, it's a work in progress. Okay. So uh, there's a couple of areas in the unincorporated county that were having problems with rehab houses that were not properly supervised. And so folks would come from other places in the state to Lawrence County, and they would be stacked basically on top of each other in these houses uh, where you have, might have five or 10 people per bedroom. Right. And they would be put in these, these isolated rural areas. And, and these are folks that may have had trouble with substance abuse or with the law. And the last thing you wanna do is put them all in one place with zero supervision in the county. And so that was creating a lot of trouble for a lot of different people in, in across the unincorporated county. So this was, uh, this was about, uh, I want to say between two to three years ago, we started talking about uh, modifying our ordinances to make it more difficult for these rehab houses to operate. Um, that way they could have strict guidelines. And if they did operate, they were operating in good faith and they were actually going to help people. Because a lot of what they were doing, and not all of them, some of them are extremely good, but a lot of them were not operating in good faith. Mm -hmm. And, and it, was, it was really a blight on the entire area where they were located. So um, I think most of those different houses uh, have either shut down or they're in the process of going through an appeal uh, to try to stay open. But for the most part, I think that's had a 
massive impact on the unincorporated county in a positive way. Good, good, good. For sure. And, and along those lines, one more quick thing on that, um, because this is a concern to me. I have three, I got a college kid and two high school, um, and this, this is another, if you would, I hate to even use the word pandemic, that, but mm -hmm. it's coming across America, and I know it's in Georgia, uh, it's fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's killing uh, young people and, and even people that, that are, you know, prescription drugs even sometimes that uh, right. if people are sharing and they're not getting them from the doctor. Are you seeing that? Are you guys addressing that from a county perspective in any way yet? Or do you know if maybe with law enforcement, if that's being... Because I, I would love to just sound the alarm right, and say, people, look, tell your kids. You know, I, I, I even made, and people said, I'm joking about it. I said, no, my kids, if you got to get high, tell me and, and we'll figure out something, some kind of way at home. But do not buy drugs. Don't, right. Please don't, don't buy drugs. So, so, so this is one of the, the fundamental problems that I think um, we have as commissioners, and that is there's a very limited amount of things that we can have an impact on. Um, I think a lot about, you know, what, what real uh, authority looks like and what real um, leadership looks like. And people think a lot of times that, that county commissioners in their districts or their respective areas are almost like kings, that they can just do whatever they want to. Um, one of the, so that's a big issue that I have to combat with education every single day. Um, and I get asked questions like this quite a bit. And the only enforcement mechanism we have to kind of combat that would be law enforcement. And the commission doesn't have any authority over uh, any law enforcement agency in Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it a little bit more challenging, especially when oftentimes we can see that the problem exists, but we don't have a mechanism right. to fix it. Right. Um, and so it just kind of becomes one of those things that, you know, we can educate and we can talk about it, but it's not anything that we can lay hands right. on and make right. it better. And, and I think that's our, our goal, even at the chamber, sure. um, is, is to educate right. and to let people know. So many people that I've had that conversation with, the fentanyl, that, what is that? Right. They've not even heard of it. That's and, right. and it's killing people left and right. And so want to make sure we raise awareness for that as much as we can. All right, fun part. To close, um, uh, maybe a, you mentioned uh, that we talked about Southern Pine some and mm -hmm. people bringing ideas. Right. Or what, what, what is Trey Kemp maybe one idea that, that whether if you said we had unlimited funds or, mm. or resources or uh, we could put as much money into this what, what, what would Trey like to see? What I would love to see wouldn't cost a dime. And that would be if we could get a large group of people together from the four corners of Lawrence County. So there are seven towns in Lawrence County. I would like to see representation from every one of those towns. I would like to see representative, representatives from the community. And I would love to see us come up with maybe three or five strategic goals that we could have for a county. Because one of the things that we, that I combat is not having a direction, like where Lawrence County will be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And I'm trying to make this county a little better for my kids. If we could all get on the same page about what better looks like and define better for what that means for the next generation and the generation after that, and we were all on that same page, I think it would make uh, drama go down quite a bit. I think everyone would be on the same sheet of music. And if, we're, if all of our ships are sailing in the same direction, I think we get so much more done and we do it with a smile on our face. I couldn't agree more with you. And, and, and that's, a, that's a whole different topic and subject sure. probably to have to, to even, to, unfortunately, to cause that and to get that to happen. It should be easy to do. Um, you know as well as I do, sure. it's not so easy because people have their own idea and their own thoughts that's of right. how something should work. But, uh, and I will share with you um, my idea that came into mind while we were talking about the complex in, in Cartersville there, uh -huh. in our complex. Uh, and I don't know if it's even possible, but, but just if, with the, the pond that's out at Southern Pines, mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see that expanded just a little bit and mm -hmm. some beach sand and, and the volleyball nets and courts that they have at that complex in Cartersville. Yeah. I think that would be an additional draw and, and a great weekend entertainment for people. I don't think it would be really expensive to maintain once mm -hmm. you put volleyball nets and sand out. Um, but just an idea, anyway, I thought to. Well, one of the things that we've looked at is taking the water park the way it is now. And there's an area, there's a parking lot, mm -hmm. there's a grassy area, and then there's some, some playground equipment. But going from the water park now to that, to that pond that you're talking about and expanding in that general direction over the next 10 or 15 years, 
And so that might be something we I see. I like it. I like it. They got zip lines up there too, by the way. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so, That'd be so awesome. It, it would be. Hey, hey, Trey, thank you so much for taking Absolutely. time out and sitting with me today and, and being open. And, and I can tell you folks, Trey had no idea what I was going to ask him today. We didn't practice or anything. You probably could tell by the me bouncing all over the place. But, but that's what I appreciate you, about your brother is, is you're open and honest with us. And, and when we need uh, answers, you, you do the best you can to get them to us. So thank I you for your time. I appreciate you having today. me on. Thank you. And thank you, as always, for joining us, helping us make today and every day another great day for business in Dublin and Lawrence County. I'm Thelma Zipperer. Uh, I first met Dr. K in March of 2018. In 2017, uh, I had to quit work. I had to go on disability because of my heart condition. In March of 2018, I had gone to the hospital, to the emergency room, because I was actually in the process of having a heart attack. And, um, you know, you hear the term uh, God send but I believe that God sent Dr. K to, to the emergency room. I believe he was on call that day for a reason, for me. Uh, they called him, he came in, and uh, I had changed insurance uh, because I had to go on disability, so the insurance has changed. So one of the first things I asked him, and he may not remember this, but the first thing I asked him, I said, do, do y'all take my insurance? And he said, he, without even batting an eye, he said, I'm not, we're not talking about insurance right now. I got a patient that needs me. And I'm telling you, that said bunches right there. And then where the other doctor had given up on me and sent me home basically to die, Dr. K went to work and he checked my records. I mean, I have so many, so many heart issues, but he didn't, he didn't bat an eye. He said, let's, let's, let's fix this. And he started fixing. When I first started seeing Dr. K, like I said, I, I could barely, get around and and now I can do almost anything I want to do within reason and you know I know that God sent Dr. K to take care of me and to give me back my life and I was even on a diabetic medicine I was taking 1500 milligrams of metformin every day and now I as of about a year after I was started seeing him I, I'm off all my heart all my uh, diabetes medicine and my A1C is staying perfectly below, below where it has to be. I'm not just a heart patient when I come in there. I'm Thelma Zipperer. I'm a person that needs whatever he can take care of. And I believe that Dublin is so blessed to have Dr. K in this area. If not, I, you know, I don't know where I would be right now, honestly. Anything that your body needs that, that he needs to take care of, he gets on it and he don't stop, he don't give up on you. He says, let's fix this, and he goes to work. I would recommend anybody that even has an inkling they need a cardiologist or just want to check and make sure if they do or not, I would highly recommend that you go see Dr. K. You will be glad you did. You will, I, I, I mean, that's just who he is. He is just personable and an excellent doctor. So you can't beat that. You can't beat it.